ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. The War Within beta has been updated with the new Shaman Talon trees completely because there was a lot of stuff missing before that. So now we're going to go through them and I'm going to talk about what's changed, what's good, what's bad. And I'm also going to give you two builds that you can use. One for Farseer Shaman, which is going to be leaning more towards the Riptide builds. And then we're going to have a Chain Heal build for the Totemic Shaman as well. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through the left uh, class tree and the changes that we've seen there. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is that uh, you have this note over here, which is your movement abilities, Gust of Wind or Spirit Walk. So that's very easy to access right now. That's a huge win. And then the Earth Elemental has been moved here to the right side with the new talent that reduces the damage that you take while this is active. It's also easily accessible. I haven't picked it at this point yet just because I wanted to pick uh, so many other things. But it's definitely something that you can take advantage of uh, pretty easily. Now, the first bad part that kind of stands out is that, uh, okay, you have to pick up a capacitor totem that's fine but then in order to get to nature's guardian which is also something that you probably want all the time not to mention that it's your gateway to some of the other talents you have to basically pick one of the extra talents that uh, complement the capacitor totem uh, that's basically your only option because hex is something that you don't want to use uh, we don't have incorporeals anymore so that's one reason less to pick it up and tremor totem is something very specific more for uh, pvp and maybe mists of tyrannus side but those are two talents that you're not picking right so you kind of have to pick up uh, this in order to get to nature's guardian which is a bit of, a little bit limiting because you have this note all the time um, so i guess it's up to you to take advantage of that then we go over to the left side where things uh, look fine until you get to the elemental resistance talent. Now, let me talk about this a little bit because uh, I don't like this talent at all. So you get only fire, frost and nature damage reduction, which is kind of limiting as well, right? It's not covering all magic damage or something like that. It's just those three specific schools of magic. Now, if you're using Cloudburst, let's start from there. It reduces the damage taken by the targets that you heal for only 3 seconds by 3%. Now, this, in my opinion, is extremely bad design because when you use Cloud Burst, you use it to top people off after the damage event has happened, right? So you're basically not mitigating anything unless it's like some pulsing damage or something like that, right? But usually you use the Cloud Burst towards the end as well. So uh, the damage mitigation that comes after the fact that you healed and it's only three seconds long is a little bit useless right now there are some things that you can do with healing stream totem because first it gives six percent but it's only to one target uh it also lasts three seconds and uh, i think there's a talent okay so if you're a totemic shaman and you pick up uh, reactivity you can have the healing stream totem healing to different people so that would be a little bit more beneficial for this talent but you don't have control who takes the DR. It might not be the person that you need to be DR'd. And it's again only three seconds. So this node feels really bad for me because uh, like I didn't even want to pick it. However, I would like to get to Elemental Warding, which is all magic damage. It's not just three schools of, uh, of magic. But in order to get to that, you have to pick the elemental resistance, right? And I just didn't want this. So this either needs to be reworked, because the only other way to get to uh, elemental warding is to get the improved purified spirit, which removes the curse effects. And that's useful sometimes. But if you don't need curse dispel in specific dungeons that you're not picking up that, you're not picking it in raid. So, yeah, I mean, this, this node here, if they move it and they make it optional, I guess nobody's going to pick it then. Uh, but yeah, th th those. this is like the huge problem that I have with this node. Uh, it's kind of like a waste of a node. It's useless talent and it's not positioned correctly whatsoever. A little bit of re rework though, maybe. Uh, I don't know how exactly that they could improve it. At least make it all damage. Maybe make it a little bit longer direction or something like that. Uh, but right now it just seems uh, utterly useless. 
All right, moving on, there's a few more talents that we need to mention. So uh, the Traveling Storms, which uh, is the option to cast the Thunderstorm on an ally, it's something that uh, is a choice note with Thundershock. So it's either that or you knock up the targets. So obviously in Mythic Plus, uh, you're going to be using Thundershock all the time because you don't want the mobs flying all over the place, which means that this is basically going to be a purely PvP talent. I think it's going to be a lot of fun in PvP, but uh, in PvE, you're definitely sticking with Thundershock. Uh, another interesting discussion we had was for the Season Winds talent, which uh, after you interrupt something, uh, you get damage reduction for that school of magic for 18 seconds. Um, so I don't know if this two tip is correct, uh, but 18 seconds is a long time. So that's actually not a bad talent, even in PvE. Uh, it stacks up to t two times, right? Uh, if you pull a pack and there's two mobs of the same kind, if you throw up one of them, you're basically getting DR for the other. But this talent is also locked so far down the tree that it's not that easy to get to. Um, so I don't think this is going to see a lot of play. Maybe it's going to be better again for PvP. Uh, but it's just something that I, I figured I should mention. The other big talking point is uh, the surging totem that you get as to damage because uh, as you're going to see in just a second, once I cast it, you can't move it unless you get to damage projection. This is actually really, really bad because you have a lot of key binds as Restoration Shaman, especially if you're picking like all the totems, you can get Earth Grab now and Wind Rush totem both at the same time. Uh, you're getting a new totem we're going to talk about in just a second. So having one more key bind for damage projection is just too much. Um, I think they need to redesign Surging Totem so uh, you can freely move it around. Um, I, I don't think that's going to be such a big problem. Uh, they already improved it because now when you cast it, you actually target it, right? So it's not like before that uh, it just drops in your feet. Uh, however, um, you know, it, it's just uh, relocating it and being lock, locked, not able to relocate it after you cast it for another 10 seconds. It's just too much. It's just too much. They should make it like a Vesper Totem in Shadowlands where you can just freely keep recasting it and repositioning it, which is basically going to be the same effect as they were aiming with the automatic recast of the Healing Reigns uh, that you would get uh, before the rework. So um, having said that, like I haven't picked Totemic Projection, but if you're playing with uh, Surging Totem, probably that's a talent point that you have to spare. But now let's talk about the new totem, Stone Buark Totem. So this one summons a totem in your feet that gives you a huge shield for 10 seconds and then it gives you additional smaller shields every 5 seconds. Uh, so you can see how this works. Uh, I'm going to cast it right now. You can see uh, this is actually Wind Barrier. This is different. This is the Absorb Shield that you're getting here. And as you can see, I'm getting smaller shields that um, after the big one expires, you know, they keep remaining, they keep piling. So this is actually a pretty cool defensive that you can use. And the best part is that you can pick Totemic Recall, which uh, re resets the cooldown of a totem that has a cooldown short than three minutes, and you can reset the cooldown of that. So uh, I can cast my uh, Totemic Recall right now, and I can cast another one of these. And these actually stack. Considering that uh, you can actually use the Call of the Elements talent, which reduces the Totemic Recall uh, cooldown by 60 seconds, you can have Totemic Recall and the Stone Buark Totem both at a two-minute cooldown, which is a pretty nice defensive. It's uh, pretty deep down in the tree, but this seems to be uh, pretty powerful. You can basically have two of these every two minutes or so. Um, so that, that seems like a big win. Uh, I haven't played with it yet to see how much uh, damage it actually mitigates, but the shield seems to be quite big. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to using that. And let me mention one more thing. If you're playing Totemic Shaman, you have the snow that uh, if you have a totem active, it grants you additional absorb shield every 30 seconds. So you can basically get double shields or even triple shields. So if you drop your uh, Bulwark totem, you reset it, you drop it again, and then you get another shield from the Wind Barrier. That's a huge shield. That's a lot of uh, absorb amount. Uh, so those are going to be some very fun uh, interactions that you're going to see uh, when you play uh, with uh, this new totem. Uh, but it's definitely something that I think shamans needed because uh, the defenses were just uh, not that amazing compared to some of the uh, other classes.
All right, now let's talk about the restoration tree, which also has a lot of changes. And right now I have this uh, made up chain heal build, which I'm going to use with the totemic. And that's kind of the way to go because when you drop different totems, you're getting those uh, extra chain heals. And uh, it only makes sense uh, to make your build revolve around this. Now, the first thing to note is that Stormkeeper, as you can see, is completely gone, which means that that lead combo that we used to have with Stormkeeper and uh, Ancestral Guidance, it's gone as well, right? So uh, that's something to keep in mind. All right, the upper part of the tree seems relatively normal as before. Um, the Ancestral Viger is now one point talent and it's very easy to pick up, but you don't even have to do that like in lower keys and stuff like that just because uh, you don't need it to access the stuff uh, below it. There's also this Whitewater talent uh, which gives you extra critical um, strike chance or critical strike effectiveness that it's also not necessary unless you're uh, running Torrent, which we're going to do in the other build. Uh, but it seems that you have plenty of options uh, in the beginning here of what to pick and what not to pick. Uh, the healing wave leads to the spiritling totem, which then gives you the new spouting spirits talent, uh, which gives more DR and uh, extra healing to allies in the spiritling totem. So that's actually pretty damn nice. And on the right hand side, uh, you have the master of the elements, uh, which I'm yet to test this. It's a little bit weird. So when you cast lava burst, uh, you buff your next healing surges and they also apply flame shock to it. Um, depending on how good this is, I mean, it's totally possible that we just drop this and we invest the points somewhere else. But for now, for testing purposes, it's definitely uh, staying there. The other things to mention here is the Earth Living Weapon, uh, which you have to pick uh, in order to get benefit from uh, the Imbued Mastery. And you have to have it on your weapon to get advantage from the Improved li Earth Living Weapon, which automatically is casted on targets that you heal with your uh, Healing Surge. So this one's pretty good. Earth and Harmony has been reworked a little bit. Uh, it gives less DR and um, the healing is a little bit more if the target is below 50% uh, health. And uh, the thing here is that in order to get to this, you basically have to pick Earth Living because in M+, especially you're not picking Earth and Wall Totem, maybe in Raid you're going to do that, uh, but you're kind of forced to pick Earth Living Weapon. So this is my first problem here. Uh, in order to, to pick this Earth and Harmony, which you basically want 100% of the time, you're basically forced into one of those two nodes. And those two nodes basically have nothing to do with the Earth Shield, right? They're not connected in any state or logic with the Earth Shield, which is kind of bugging me, right? So it could be that Earth Living Weapon is actually pretty good, it's not bad, etc. But there is no logical connection between those two nodes. Uh, so I think that's something that they need to think about a little bit. Once you pick the Earth and Harmony though, uh, then the reactive warding uh, talent is accessible and this one heals based on the missing uh, shields that, uh, the missing uh, stacks for the shields that you have on your target. In that includes both the Earth Shield and the Water Shield, which by the way now stacks to nine times, right? So uh, you can get some mana back if you have a missing Water Shield and you recast it, which is pretty cool, so to speak. Um, then we go to the left hand side, uh, which uh, has the ascendance up here. So that's relatively easy to reach, right? Uh, you're always going to get this. And then the talent below is um, a node for two of the two new talents. You can either re reduce the ascendance uh, for six, 60 seconds or you can have extra haste and a little bit more duration. Now, one thing that I notice is if you pick uh, deeply rooted elements and the ascendance procs from there, uh, you don't get those three extra seconds if you pick the uh, Preminiscence talent. Uh, you only get the haste. Uh, but I kind of think that uh, the first Ascendant is going to be the go-to talent here because it's going to be one minute less uh, than uh, uh, in, in cooldown, which means you can cast way more Ascendances. Uh, so that's a huge win. Now, going to the Chain Heal build, uh, here's where the Tidebringer is. But then you have two talents uh, that you can use to reach high tide, which if you're running a chain heal build, you, you basically must uh, pick. And the problem here is that one of them increases the duration of Riptide and the other one is Ancestral Awakening, which has been changed. We're going to talk about this, but this talent has nothing to do with chain heal, right? So the problem here is that in order for you to pick high tide, you're picking two talents that you basically don't want in a chain heal build. 
I think they just need to put an extra arrow unless they change notes, uh, they change the placement completely, but they need to put an extra arrow from Tidebringer because if you're running chain hero build, you're, you're basically going to get Tidebringer all the time and this is going to make the tree a little bit more complete. That's basically the same problem as Earth and Harmony. In order to get to this node, you're picking some random talents that don't complement the build that you're trying to uh, create. So that's definitely some uh, food for thought. And of course, I'm going to provide this feedback to them in the forums as well. And there's one more thing that I want to talk about here. Downpour is down here. Uh, I'm going to pick it up uh, just in a moment uh, to show you how it works. Uh, but the problem with this talent is that it activates now automatically once you cast Healing Rain, right? The problem with that and the problem with Totemic Shaman is that you don't have Healing Rain, you have the uh, Surging Totem. So uh, look on how this works. So when you cast the Totem, you now have six seconds to cast Downpour, which is insta-cast and it heals everybody around you. So that's actually pretty cool. But the problem with Totemic Shaman is that you get this once every 24 seconds. And if you're playing Farseer Shaman, you get to cast Healing Rain every 10 seconds, which means the downpour makes much more sense in that build and makes almost no sense in the Totemic Shaman build, which is why I haven't picked this in this build uh, and picked uh, just Reactive Warding instead to see how good that is. Uh, in the original build, actually, I didn't have mana tight. I had downpour, but for Totemic, as I said, it just uh, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so maybe that's something that they need to, uh, to think about and rework as well. I haven't picked any of the left-hand side talents as well because they're all connected to uh, Riptides, and we're going to talk about those when we go to the Farseer builds. But this is how my Totemic uh, Restoration Shaman for Mythic Plus actually looks like. And of course, there are a few points that you can move around. So you can pick, uh, you can drop Ancestral Vigor, you can drop Manatite, you can probably drop Reactive Warding as well and move those points uh, around. Uh, for example, you can get the new uh, Manatite Totem, which gives you three healing surges, which are going to be insta cast and reduced mana cost once you cast your Manatite instead of this or instead of uh, Ancestral Vigor. All of these are going to be valid builds. Now, I am going to paste this in the description of this video, but right now the import just doesn't work. If I export this and then I try to import it, it just gives me an error uh, and it says import is not possible. So you might not be able to import it, but you have a screenshot uh, at least that you can look at and pick the respective talents. All right, we're finally on the Farseer Shaman. Trust me, that wasn't easy because the beta keeps crashing no matter what you do. And this is the build that I'm proposing over here. So uh, the main part of the tree on the restoration side looks basically the same, but we've dropped all the talents that are connected to the chain heals over here. And instead, we're picking the Torrent Talent, which doesn't seem to be implemented yet, but increases the initial heal of your uh, Riptide, and it also gives you increased critical chance for that initial heal. Then, this is where the new uh, Primal Tide Core is. This gives you extra Riptides uh, every time every time you cast four Riptides. Then uh, we have the Tide Waters. Every time you cast Healing Rain, the allies with your Riptide are healed for additional amount. And then we have the good old Primordial Wave, uh, which uh, right now I don't think you can run with a Chain Heal build because it's quite expensive to get here. Your other option is to use the Undercurrent over here, which uh, is still two-point talent. So uh, it's definitely not easy to get. However, uh, we're picking Downpour here and let me show you how this works. So uh, I'm going to cast my Healing Rain right now. And as you can see, I can now press it again to do the extra downpour healing. And I think that's going to play out pretty nice with Farseer Shaman, uh, as you can do this uh, every 10 seconds. Now, keep in mind that this is still kind of broken because you get the Ancestral Swiftness and the Nature Swiftness both. So they're not sharing cooldown. As you can see, my Nature Swiftness now goes on cooldown and I can do another one. Uh, with these. Uh, but the other big change is that Undulation can now proc your ancestors from the main Farseer talent. So uh, if you see, I'm going to spam some um, healing surges here. 
And as you can see, that procs my uh, ascend uh, ancestors and they actually keep stacking. So right now I have two, etc. And this seems to be actually pretty damn good. At the same time, you're getting extra benefits from uh, improved earth living weapon from your healing surges, uh, etc. So that feels pretty nice to play with. This build also has some nice synergies with the new Buwak Totem. Uh, you get extra shields when the Ancestors expire, so that's uh, added value. Your Riptides are going to be healing for more. Uh, your Ancestors are going to reduce the cooldown of the Riptides, which can then on their end summon another Ancestor. So you get into this swoop of just spamming Riptides and healing surges and healing waves without relying on Chain Heal uh, way too much and do the healing this way with the help, of course, of your ancestors. Not to mention that you have talents that uh, increase the healings of uh, those uh, talents by uh, eight additional percent. Uh, and you can have the tidal wave stack up to four times, which can reduce the healing time of your healing waves or give you improved critical strike chance of the surges. So again, that's the other build. I'm going to paste this in the description again as well. But as I said, you might not be able to import it. And you can still have some wiggle room over here by dropping some points, maybe investing him into the mana tight totem and getting the extra healing surges, which is going to look probably something like that. However, for uh, the Farseer Shaman, I would say you would like to have the Elemental Warding uh, after O because uh, you have a talent that increases the amount of stacks that your Earth Shield has. So you're going to get extra healing when you renew the Earth Shield on your targets because of the Reactive Warding talent. So yeah, those are my uh, initial thoughts on how the builds are going to look like. There are some problems, as I mentioned, with some talents being completely disconnected with the logic uh, above them, but hopefully those are going to get fixed uh, relatively soon. There's also quite a few talents that are still not implemented into the beta yet. Uh, they just don't work. Like, I don't think the elemental resistance is functional right now, but that will get fixed uh, relatively soon. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below and uh, I'll have some footage uh, with some gameplay coming up pretty soon. So make sure you subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Now get out of here.